friends myself prashant vishwanath dhinshetty assistant professor department of civil engineering from walchand institute of technology solapur so today i am here to explain you about slope and deflection of a cantilever beam with point load by double integration method so today's learning outcome is at the end of this session students will be able to understand and find the values of slope and deflection of cantilever beams with the point load having following conditions so before going with slope and deflection we will see what is beam and its definition so beam is a structural element that primarily resist load applied laterally to the beam axis its mode of deflection is primarily by bending so this is the beam and the load applied is laterally and the and the beam is having a bending shape it resist by bending so beams are classified based on its support conditions so why we require slope and deflection so we will see so design of beam is frequently governed by rigidity rather than strength so every building code specifies the limit of deflection as well as stresses because due to excessive deflection of the beam it is not only visually disturbing but it may also damage to other parts of building so each building codes limit the maximum deflection of beam so we have to see what is the deflection and slope of the beam so we will see the definition for the deflection of beam the deflection at any point on the axis of the beam is the distance between its position before and after bending so this is a cantilever beam it is straight and when load is applied the beam bends in this way and this is the deflection so wherever you take the section so the deflection is greater at the free end and it decreases to the fixed end slope of the beam slope at any section in the deflected beam is defined as angle in radians which is the which the tangent at the section makes with the original axis of the beam so this is the curvature where the beam deflects and this is the line tangent and we are having this reference horizontal axis of the beam so this theta b is the slope of the beam cantilever beam it is a beam which is fixed at one end and free at the other end so one end is fixed other end is free so we are seeing by double integration method so now what is the equation by double integration method so when the beam deflects uh, this way so it has a curvature and here is a center point of that curvature and this is the radius of that curvature so the radius of uh, curvature of the deflected beam is given by the flexural equation that is m upon i is equals to e by r therefore m upon e i is equals to 1 upon r so we will treat it as equation a but for a practically beam or mathematically it is 1 upon r is equals to d2y by dx square that is equation b equating this equation a and b we get m upon e i is equals to d2y by dx square therefore m is equals to e i d2y by dx square this is the equation for the double integration method so this is a cantilever beam which is having a length l and load w is at the free end due to this load there is a deflection of the beam here yb is the deflection and theta b is the slope so now we will consider any section in a beam that is at a distance of x from fixed end and the remaining part is l minus x so total length of beam is l and the w is acting at free end so at this section the moment mx is given by minus w into l minus x this is load into distance of the load from the section where you are going to take the bending moment so the minus sign is due to hogging bending moment so as per the equation 1 m is equals to ei d2y by dx square so putting the value of m so we get ei d2y by dx square is equals to minus w into bracket l minus x is equals to minus wl plus wx so integrating the above equation we get 
ei dy by dx is equals to minus wl into x plus w by 2 into x square plus c1. So, this is equation number 3 where c1 is the constant of integration. So, again integrating that equation 3, we get e i y is equals to minus w l into x square by 2 plus w by 2 into x square by 3 plus c 1 x plus c 2. So, where c 2 is the again constant of integration, this is equation 4, where c 1 and c 2 are constant of integration. So, these are obtained by boundary condition. So, what are boundary conditions for cantilever? So, you are pause the video and try to get answer for the boundary condition. So, at the support is fixed, the values obtained from the boundary condition are at x is equals to 0, that is at fixed end, deflection y is 0 and at x is equals to 0, slope dy by dx is also 0. So, by substituting the value of x is equals to 0, y is equals to 0 in equation 4, we get c 2 is equals to 0 and by substituting x is equals to 0 and dy by dx is equals to 0 in equation 3, we get c 1 is equals to 0. So, now putting this value c 1 is equals to 0 in equation 3, we get e i dy by dx is equals to minus w l x plus w x square by 2. So, plus c 1 that is 0 is equals to minus w taking common, we will get into bracket l x minus x square by 2. So, this is equation number 5, this equation is known as slope equation. So, we can find the slope at any point on the cantilever by substituting the value of x in this equation. So, we will get the theta b that is at free end, where putting x is equals to l in this above equation, we get e i theta b is equals to minus w into bracket l into l minus l square by 2, here I am replacing x by l. So, we will get by solving it is minus w l square by 2. So, therefore, theta b is equals to minus w l square upon 2 e i that is equation 5 a. So, this negative sign shows the tangent at b makes an angle in anticlockwise direction with line a b. Substituting the value of c 1 is equals to 0 and c 2 is equals to 0 in equation 4, we get e i y is equals to minus w l into x square by 2 plus w by 2 into x cube by 3. So, here again the two terms are next two terms are 0 as c 1 and c 2 are 0. This is equals to taking minus w common minus w into bracket l x square by 2 minus x cube by 6, this is equation number 6. This equation is known as deflection equation. We can find deflection at any point on the cantilever by substituting the value of x. So, we have seen that the maximum deflection is at free end. So, we will substitute x is equals to l and the deflection at free end is y b. Therefore, e i y b is equals to minus w into bracket l into l square by 2 minus l cube by 6, here I am replacing x by l. So, solving this we get is uh, e i y b is equals to minus w l cube by 3. So, therefore, y b deflection is equals to minus w l cube upon 3 e i, it is equation 6 a. Here again negative sign shows the deflection is downward. So, now instead of this load acting at the free end, it is acting at somewhere at a distance a from the fixed end. So, this is l, so this is a and this distance is l minus a. Now, let theta c is the slope at point c. So, now here if I draw a tangent here that will be having a theta c that is dy by dx at c. So, y c is the deflection point at c and y b is the deflection point at b. So, now the portion A c of the cantilever may be taken similar to a cantilever which is having a load at free end. So, now I will discard this. So, if I uh, assume this only, 
so now this is w is acting in a cantilever at a distance a that is at free end therefore theta c as we have derived it is w a square upon 2 e i so here in the equation 5a we have already derived that equation so instead of l i am putting it as uh, the distance at a so y c is again w a cube upon 3 e i here i am not mentioning the negative sign because here it is anti clockwise direction and here the deflection is downward so i am only taking the values so i have not put negative sign there so now to find the theta b and yb so now beam will bend only uh, the beam will bend only between a and c so here in this only portion the beam will bend as c to b the uh, remain straight since no bending moment occurs in cb portion so now if no bending moments occur this will be a straight line so this straight line if i continues that will give a theta c or theta b will be same so theta c is equals to theta b is w a square upon 2 er so yb is equals to yc so this deflection plus this deflection so here i am knowing this angle it is theta c so from that distance l minus a and theta c i will get this deflection b b dash so yb is equals to w, yc plus theta c into bracket l minus a so putting yc i will get yb is equals to w a cube upon 3 i plus w a square upon 2 i into bracket l minus a because theta c is w a square upon 2 i so these are the references which i have used thank you